Welcome to Grace for Today. Blessings, everybody. We're so glad that you've joined us. And I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and that you will have all that you need to accomplish his plan for your life. Blessings to you. And um, thank you for those of you who share as soon as you come on. Don't forget about our YouTube channel. We'll upload this video very shortly and you'll be able to share that with someone else. God bless you. We'll give a few moments to see if you get a notification. We're going to look today at, um, uh, a friend of mine tells me that I'm a Psalm girl. So we're going to look at Psalm 27. This is day 19 and probably our last day covering this. But um, let's hope that you get a chance to, um, there you go, you just got a notification. Great, we'll give you a few moments to come on. And um, we're going to read a couple of passages from Psalm 27. And um, good morning, everybody. We're going to read a few passages from Psalm 27, um, but mainly verse 14. Psalm 27, verse 14. Good morning. Thank you for sharing as soon as you come on. You're welcome to speak and to say good morning. Hey there, Missionary Quinn. Hey, Brandy Rogers. Hey, Sister Ruben. Hey, y'all. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, Tina Gillum. God bless you. All right, I'm going to give you all. Hey, Geraldine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start because time continues to move on. And um, I want to be able to finish this portion. Hey, Tony. Hey, Quinithia. Okay, I'm done speaking. Good morning, everybody. All right, because I want to say, hey, it's a Southern thing. We like saying hello. So the main verse we're going to look at is Psalm 27, verse 14. It says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And this is our last lesson on, um, I think at least, Yes, it's his day, and he made it for us. So Psalm 27, verse 14, in the uh, Amplified, the classic Amplified version says this. Oh, let's start at verse 11. I think that's where I want to start. Verse 11, and it says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain an even path because of my enemies, those who lie in wait for me. I know sometimes y'all don't think that nobody's lying in wait for you. And I'm not saying you need to go around being suspect to everybody. I'm saying that we should remind ourselves that we should uh, certainly uh, ask him to teach us his ways. So no matter what the enemy does, we're not caught off guard. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. He has devices, plans, plots, and ploys to make sure that you don't get to where you need to with God. But God tells us in his word that we should ask him, teach us your ways, your way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain and even path because of my enemies, which means that there is someone who wants you to stumble and fall. But it doesn't matter what their desires are as long as we are being taught the way of the Lord and we are following his way, his plan. Good morning. Verse 12 says, give me not up to the will of my adversaries for false witnesses have risen up against me. They breathe out cruelty and violence. Sometimes when we have false witnesses and people who lie, we just live in this disbelief. How could they lie on me? How could they say that? They know me. I know I've done that. But if they lied on Jesus and he did nothing but good, why would we not expect the world and even some um, believers or church people to, to lie on us to misrepresent the truth. Are we not, are we greater than our Lord? And then what the scripture says, if they lied on Jesus, 
Won't they misrepresent you? Won't they lie on you? No matter how good your intentions are, we need to come to terms with there will be days, there will be times, there will be situations where people would rather believe a lie than to stand for truth. Help us all to come to terms with that. He said in his word, For false witnesses have risen up against me. They breathe out cruelty and violence. Cruelty and violence. What? What would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? Listen, what? That's the encouragement. What would have happened to us if we had just only had hope in what people said about us or how they treated us? If I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, what would have happened to me? Listen, I would have been locked up somewhere in a mental institution because people, because the things they say, the things they believe and spout out against you that are untruth, you would have been overwhelmed. But I'm looking to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm looking to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living right now. You don't have to go with whatever the last word was about you. You can choose to believe the report of the Lord. There's a song we sing, whose report will you believe? We shall believe. Edna is going to believe the report of the Lord. His report says, what does it say about you? His thoughts about you are good and not evil to give you hope and an expected end. You are as the apple of his eye. He has great thoughts concerning you. His, his ways, if a man's ways please him, the scripture says he will even make your enemies, your adversaries to be at peace with you. They won't have anything to say. And even when they have said evil and derogatory things, you won't be shaken by it. Let's look at this. Um, Psalm 24, 27, and 14. It says this. Let me read it to you from the, um, it says, well, verse 14. Let's look at that. Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Wait, hope for, and expect the Lord. Now, if you're doing that instead of meditating on the words spoken about you, those negative words, I mean, if we would meditate instead of worrying about the negative things that are being spoken about you, what others believe, I would do such and such, but I think people going to say, you know, my usual response is, are any of those people paying your bills? Are any of them uh, available to uh, be there when you need someone to be there? Are they there? Do they have a heaven or a hell to put you in? Then their opinions, Paul said, I don't even count my own opinion to be anything. Less more the opinions of others. Help us to get that mindset. That we don't allow the mindset, the, let the opinions and thoughts of others dictate, determine where we're going, how far we can go. Let our opinions, even of ourselves, be little. Let it be, what does God think about me? What is he going to be able to say, well done? I actually had to come to terms with that the other day. <clears throat> uh, Edna, with what you're doing. Is God going to be able to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Will he be able to say that? Which translates into, have you done well? Have you done good? Have you been faithful? Have you been faithful? Will he be able to speak words of peace over you? I want God to be able to say about Edna Jameson, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So the thoughts and opinions of others are almost irrelevant. Yes, you need good godly counsel. Yes, you need people who are going to speak into your life. Yes, you need to take critique when it comes, if it's going to help make us better. But those who have malicious derogatory intent, you can let that go, beloved. 
Wait on the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Hope for the Lord. Expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Stand. That's the short version. Stand. Stand. Yes, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. He said it again. Wait for, hope for, and expect the Lord. Listen, I don't know how God is going to work it out. I don't know how God's going to fix it. I know you may be in a fix and you don't know what to do, how to do, when to do. I don't know how God's going to fix your situation. I don't know how God's going to work it out. But I believe what he said. I'm going to hope for. I'm going to wait for. I'm going to expect God. I don't know how God's going to fix all the evil things people have said about you. But your mandate still remains clear. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and uh, is saved uh, shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. That decision is not up to us. What is our responsibility? Preach the gospel. They can hear it. Be saved. And yes, he will, Quinithia. We don't always have all the puzzle pieces. But we have to know what we do know. God is faithful. So I'm going to look for him. I'm going to expect him. I'm going to hope in him. I'm going to wait for him. But waiting is not sitting there idle. Waiting is being, not being passive. It is choosing to be active in our belief and in our moving forward with what we do know. I may not know everything, but what I, and I know I don't, I don't know everything. I know we wish we did, don't we? But we don't. But hey, Sister Regina, but we do have to have confidence. That God is working all things. Romans 8, 28, beloved. You don't remember anything else. Remember Romans 8, 28. When you get into a pickle, just remember. And this we know. This we are certain of. That all things work together for good. He works them together. It will produce good. It will produce the will of God. It will produce the will of God for those who love the Lord. Do you love him? Are you willing? He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Are you keeping his word? And for those who are called according to his purpose. Two, two, two qualifiers. It's working for your good if you love the Lord and you're called according to his purpose. Being called according to his purpose means that I'm trying to fulfill everything God has placed in my life. We have to choose. When you're a mother or you're a father, you, you have little children, that season won't last forever. But while you're in that season, make sure you're training your children for Jesus. When you get married, you don't have children, make sure that you're, you're building a foundation with your spouse. Make sure you're building a solid foundation on the word. Make sure that you're loving your wife like Christ loved the church. Make sure that you are honoring and respecting your husband even as and submitting even as the church does to her Savior, to her lover, her Lord. Learn each other. Dwell with your wife according to knowledge. We have to always daily choose to walk with him. Let me read one more to you. He says, verse 11. This is from the Passion Translation that I'm going to pray. I don't think I'll get to the other one. Um, my time is gone. Now teach me, Yahweh, all about your ways and tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. I want God to tell me what to do. I may have to ask somebody for some good counsel and see if it agrees with my spirit. But I, I just know I don't want to talk to a bunch of y'all and y'all not leading me in the way of the Lord. And people have opinions. They're all free of charge. Right, Annie, Annie Louise Ingram. Sealing those cracks. Put the word in there. Listen, you need to meditate the word. Don't look trying to get some great mysterious revelation. Just read it so that you can absorb it and feed your spirit. Let me move on. Okay. He says, now teach me, Yahweh, all about your ways and tell me what to do. Make it clear for me to understand, for I'm surrounded by waiting enemies. Listen, God doesn't have a problem making it clear to you. 
You don't feel like you're dumb. The enemy will make you feel like you're dumb and you can't ask questions. He's a liar. He's a liar. We're all children before our father and he wants us to understand. Don't let them defeat me, Lord. You can't let me fall into their clutches. They keep accusing me of things I've never done, breathing out violence against me. Yet, I believe with all my heart that I will see again your goodness. Yahweh, in the land of life eternal. Here's what I've learned through all, through it all. Here it is. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. Thank you all for the hearts. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. This is the Passion Translation. You can go to Blue Letter Bible and read it. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. With the Lord. With the Lord. Some of us are entwined as one with everybody else and every other talk show, but you're not entwined with the Lord. So you're following all sorts of ways that don't lead to life and peace. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting for he will never disappoint you. God will never disappoint you. Some of you say, well, I've had some disappointment. Well, God has a way of redeeming your life and you will not be disappointed. Beloved, trust him. Wait for him. Trust him. Hope in him. Expect God to work. Expect God to move. Expect God. When you're expecting when Christmas comes, when we were kids, you know, I don't remember asking for things. I'm sure I did. Uh, but you were always excited because you didn't know what you were going to get, but you knew you were going to get something. Even if it wasn't what you wanted, we have to remember that God is a good father. I got to go. My time is gone. What's the message today? Keep waiting on the Lord with expectant hearts, with expectant hearts, looking for him, expecting him, hoping in him because he is faithful. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that your word will not return to your void, but it will accomplish everything you've sent it out to. We ask you to accomplish your will in us. Order our steps. Help us to hear your voice clearly. Father, make it clear because we have an adversary who wants to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God, you said in your word that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We want the abundant life. We want your best right now. We're not pursuing your hand. We're pursuing your face. And we know that with that, we receive every good thing you have for us. Help us to wait patiently for you, to trust you, to wait expectantly on you and to hope in you. Father, you are a healer. Heal our minds. Heal us of our past. Heal us of those negative words spoken to us, about us, and over us. Help us to resist the adversary, to submit ourselves to you, and you will move on our behalf. You will exalt us in due time. Father, we thank you that you order our steps. Heal us from the inside out. We thank you for it and receive it done in the name of Jesus. So it is. Amen. All right. My time is gone and I know many of you are getting ready to go to work. I pray the Lord will bless you and keep you and order your steps and that you will wait for him. You will hope, look for him, expect him because he will move for you. Don't forget about our YouTube channel. It's available for those who do not have social media. Please share this video, type in, catch the replay, hashtag graced for today. I hope that you will um, remember my book on Amazon and I pray that God will bless you over this weekend. And let's believe God to cover us, cover our children, cover our families and give us grace for today. All right. So I hope that you'll join me in the morning. If you have not, please like and subscribe, follow uh, Grace for Today here, as well as on YouTube, subscribe to that channel and um, you'll be able to get the notifications. It might be a little late, but you'll get them. And um, hope that you'll join me on Monday morning at 7, 15 a.m. Central Time as we continue to look into the word of the Lord. And remember this time spent in the word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Have a good weekend. Peace.